Hello guys, I've played Battlebit for almost 100 hours of playtime and even now I'm still discovering new parts of the game. There's so many small things you have to remember, so I thought I would cover some of the most important tips that have helped me the most right here in this video. If any of these tips help you, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. And of course, if you think there's anything I've missed, put them down in the comments to help everyone else. So, jumping straight in, one of the biggest things to get to grips with is the hip fire or point fire in battle bit when you're not aiming down sight. Unlike most other games, the hip fire accuracy is not fully attached to the center of your screen, but is linked to the barrel. I'm sure we've all had an experience where we shoot someone right in the center of our screen, but they don't seem to take any damage. Basically, you have to imagine an invisible circle in the center of your screen. When you look around, the barrel is drawn to that direction. A laser obviously helps massively in this situation to show you where your barrel is facing. But when you peek an angle, if you look around whilst peeking, the barrel moves with it. So when strafing a corner, it's actually better to ensure that your barrel is central on your screen, then strafe without aiming left or right. And your hip fire will stay in the center of the screen. Practice in the firing range with a laser and you can also learn where you're aiming just from the view model alone. And talking of the practice range, this is also where you'll find the basic tutorial for the game just in case you're completely brand new. Now, Battlebit has a ton of ways of getting up buildings and every building usually has some way to get to the roof or you can use the grapple hook to get yourself up the side of any structure. The problem is, once you're up there, it can be almost impossible to get down quickly without taking full damage. Luckily, this game allows for a lot of air control, so you can easily get down from buildings by jumping down past windows and vaulting through them. You can even occasionally remove full damage by catching a ledge at the right time. As a last resort, you can try and catch a ledge from the top of a building if you know you are dying anyway. Now, reloading in battle bit is a little odd. When reloading normally, you do a slow reload animation and place the used mag into your inventory but when you hold or double tap the reload button, you do a quick reload that can almost half the time of reloading and make you ready to fight much faster, but you drop the used mag on the floor. In most intense situations, it's almost always better to fast reload. However, if you want to reload faster and you're not in danger, you can very easily fast reload and pick up the dropped magazine simultaneously without wasting time. Moving on, something that people have constantly asked me in comments is how I have more ammo than the default. On most classes, you start with the lightweight armor, which gives you a small amount of mags and one grenade with a slight movement increase. But not everyone knows that you'll quickly unlock a medium vest for all the classes, and that is my go-to armor so you can carry almost double the ammo and twice the grenades. Keep an eye out on your unlocks as they make a huge difference on your guns and your character. Now, bandaging in this game is a pretty huge mechanic, but I see so many newer players making the mistake of bandaging as soon as they take damage and then being pushed and killed. You have a lot longer to live before you need to bandage. You can wait at least 10 to 15 seconds before you run out of time, more than enough to beat off the men chasing you before finding a safe spot. The same thing goes for healing yourself when playing medic. Always make sure you're safe first before pulling out the bag and not being able to shoot back. Next up, another huge aspect of battle bit is the ability to revive any and all teammates with your bandages. But most of the time, you'll need to drag your teammate out of the line of fire first. However, if you bind the dragging keybind to the same keybind as your bandages, you'll always start dragging and reviving at the same time. This will save so much time in the long run and it will mean that you start the revive as soon as possible. And another quick tip for medics, don't forget you can drop your bandages and first aid kits by pressing X. I didn't know this until someone told me, and it's good for when there's just too many people to heal in one spot. Multiple allies can heal themselves at the same time this way. Regarding team play, so many people have no idea that the ping system exists in Battlebit. When you use your spotting button, it makes a white marker on the exact spot. And then when you ping on an enemy, the marker is red, and you can even ping and mark enemies when you're downed. You can't expect everyone to use the voice comms to communicate, but a simple ping once you go down goes a long way. Up next, let's talk about the fortifications and destruction. 
Whatever your ping button is, if you hold it down, it will bring up a menu to build certain objects. You can build simple barriers all the way up to tall walls and blocks, which take longer, but provide more cover. You can build these to get over walls and obstacles you can't reach, or you can even play Fortnite by building cover in the middle of no man's land when there's nothing else to hide behind. A cheeky strat you can also do is place mines directly behind fortifications in doorways. So enemies have to vault over them to get past, but they won't see the mine directly behind it. You can get a lot of naughty kills. And talking of mines, for some reason the anti-personnel mine will disappear after you die. However, the claymore mines will stay in the game forever for some reason. So basically, you can just spam claymores all over the map the whole round and you'll get some random juicy kills. It's annoying, but if it works, it works. And now for the destruction in this game, the basic explanation is, if it's got a brick-like pattern texture, then you can blow or smash through it. But if the texture is flat, then you probably can't damage it. However, many of these separate assets away from buildings in the game can be destroyed, like trees, windmills, and boxes. So just trial and error to see which assets are destructible. There's three main ways infantry can break walls. C4 for big wall smash, sledgehammer for human sized hole, or the pickaxe for cutting out individual bricks to turn the game into Rainbow Six Siege and shoot enemies through tiny gaps. This one is very strong for snipers. Now, if you're trying to level up in battle bit as fast as possible, the obvious class to play is Medic. If you revive and fully heal allies, you get often up to 800 points per heal. But if you're like me and you like to use snipers, snipers in this game give you a huge bonus in points for headshots and long shot kills. If you're in a big open map where you know you can get a lot of kills on infantry, you can rack up huge points. Another cheeky way to get some easy extra points is to try and finish off any enemy vehicle you see lying around, even if it's empty. Even an ATV with no one in it is over a thousand points. Helicopters are almost 2k. Just chuck a grenade or a C4 on any empty vehicles you see for a quick point boost. Moving on to the key binds to change as well, I find it much easier to bind the map to a mouse button alongside the M. You will need to be constantly opening up your map to see where the action is, and having it on the mouse means you don't have to constantly reach over. Another newer feature of Battlebit is the ability to combine magazines using the P button on your keyboard. I would definitely recommend binding this closer to your other keys for an easier time. I use H because I'm not really bothered about checking ammo in my mags. Also, you might want to separate your jump bind from your mantle bind. As in some scenarios, you want to jump next to walls to check over the top without accidentally vaulting over. I use left alt for this as the look around feature won't affect your vaulting. After this, you can then jump and check walls without accidentally vaulting over. Plus, I also have a second keybind for pinging enemies as pressing middle mouse button can be a bit fiddly in a hot situation. And one last one regarding keys, when redeploying on the map, the fastest way to redeploy is to click on the spawn you want and then just spam space instead of manually clicking deploy. I'm still an idiot who clicks on a spawn and then tries to deploy only to get frustrated when I can't spawn there anymore and I have to keep clicking everywhere. Trust me, this will help a lot in the long run. Now as for additional gameplay settings, the biggest one for me is setting a headshot color. As by default, it will be white, which is the same as a body shot. It's super important to tell if you've done a larger amount of damage and make a decision to push when they're lower on health. I've set mine to pink, so I know if I've done maximum damage. Another important one is increasing the ping size. The default ping is absolutely tiny, so I have to make it at least twice the size of default. And this next one's simple, but it makes so much sense. Just like old Battlefield games, most vehicles get a speed boost by pressing the shift key. You go almost twice as fast by just pressing a button, something I've missed from games in the past. And after all that, I think that just about covers the basic tips for Battlebit that have helped me in my first 100 hours. If any of these tips helped you, then please give it a like so I know I did a good job. But if you knew them all already, then leave a new tip down in the comments to help others. I'll be doing more tips and Battlebit gameplay in the future, so if you want more of this, just make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.